Hi, this is Lexi Nieto, voice of Tomo Aizawa from Tomo-chan is a Girl, and you're listening to Podcast Across Worlds, Hawaii's number one anime podcast. Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, where we like to read a lot of manga, watch a lot of anime, and talk about it for hours. I'm your host, Lehua Superfina. And I'm your co-host, Mikhail Casanova. And today, we have a fabulous guest, Lexi Nieto. She is a actress, voice actress, a illustrator and graphics designer, and creator of Shonen Showcase. Welcome to Podcasts Across Worlds, Lexi. Thank Hi, you for thank being you so here. much. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> so tell our audience all about you like what you want them to know about you like who you are how you got here oh gosh um well like Lehua said i am lexi <laughs> i am a performer i am i it's nice of you to mention illustration and graphic design too because that is very much like a hobby side project thing uh but yeah um I have been performing since I was in middle school. Um, I went to college for musical theater. Um, that's my first love. That is where I believe that I am, you know, the best fit is on a stage. Um, I love to sing. I love music. I have been watching anime since I was very young. So I've always had an interest in that. And I was obsessed with um, voiceover, English voiceover actors when I was younger so mm -hmm. getting to be a part of that community now as an adult is just crazy. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I moved to Dallas in March of 2021 to try and, you know, bust down a door and see if they'd let me in. And they were nice mm -hmm. enough to do that. So that is, that's where we are now. So let's see, when did you start voice acting? Like that journey? I know you wanted to be a voice actress when you're young, but when did it actually start? Yeah, so I um I didn't start really like really thinking that I could do voiceover until everything shut down for the pandemic because I was live performance. I was working at a theme park. I like I said I got my degree in theater. Like that is what mm -hmm. I wanted to do. Guns blazing, that was it. Um but, you know, once live performance wasn't really an option anymore, um, at the same time, I also started watching a lot more anime again because I was yeah. alone in my house and with a computer, <laughs> that's all I had to do. And it was like my obsession for middle school sort of came back to the surface because I started watching, as I did in middle school, more voiceover panels than I watched actual anime. Like after I finished a certain amount of episodes, I would go on YouTube and be like, so-and-so English cast at every convention ever and watch all the <laughs> all the different panels on YouTube. So I'm obsessed with them. Um, so... I was like, wait a minute, like hearing this now in this context as an adult with the experience that I have, mm -hmm. all of these actors talking about their experience was very similar to mine. They're like, oh, I majored in theater. I do theater. I have acting training in this. Mm -hmm. I have acting training in that. I was like, I could, I could do it, I think maybe. I don't know. Um, so I started taking classes towards the end of 2020 or like summer-ish end of 2020. Mm -hmm. um, and just, and like, I had a ton of knowledge just from listening to all these panels and watching all the behind the scenes footage from different shows. And like, I knew a lot more about it than I thought I did because of just knowing so much since, you know, like 2010, like I've just been watching mm -hmm. all the behind the scenes stuff and, you know, watching videos of people in the booth and stuff. So I'm very familiar mm -hmm. with it, but I never actually tried it up until very, very recently. Oh my goodness, you're like the perfect example of someone who wants something, they go get it, they oh. do their research, like, oh my goodness, everyone should be like this. That's so kind of you to say, thank you. That is, that is, I, I'm lucky enough to say that is something that I do get a lot, so that's very nice of you to say. Well, yeah, because there's a lot of people who say, like, I want to be this, and they try, and they're like, oh, it just wasn't for me, but from what you're saying, you actually did the research, and assessed it knew that you could do it but also took the extra steps like you took classes oh yeah like yeah that's that's yeah. Sort of, yeah that's like a 
I, I think that's that's a very recommended thing, especially with voiceover stuff, because the community is so small. That's mm -hmm. a great way to like at least at, at the very least meet people and get your name in front of people, whether it's the teacher of the class or just other people in the class and making mm -hmm. friends with that and being in the community. It's very like anything, really. Um, I, I think I don't think it's just in performing, but like knowing people is the way to get work or is that because people want to hang out with you. If you're a good person, you're fun mm -hmm. to hang around with, mm -hmm. then yeah. yeah, do you want to work together because then you have fun at work. Everybody wants to have fun at work. For sure. And then how long did it take for you to land a role after all that research, the classes and the auditions? Yeah. Um, let's see. I was finally brought in for a like official Funimation Crunchyroll project in March of last year. So just over a year mm -hmm. ago, um, because I joined what's called a Walla group, which is the like background, like if there's a crowd scene, they just need people to talk about things in the background. So you're not hearing Japanese crowd noise when there's English speaking in the front. Um, mm -hmm. So that's literally just coming in with three other people usually. Um, mm -hmm. And just like, what's for breakfast today, mother? Oh, do we need to go to the store? Like just random improv, <laughs> like where you're in a market. Oh, I should buy some bread. Like some, you know, stuff like that. Or like, did you do the homework last night? Oh man, I'm so hungry. Like whatever, <laughs> whatever scenario you just, you're like, all right, this is the scene, go. Um, <laughs> uh, so that's how I got, you know, on like contracted and being brought into the studio. And that's how mm -hmm, I, you know, mm -hmm. started knowing people. Um, and then at the same time, I also had my project that you mentioned, Shonen Showtunes. Um, I interviewed my now very good friend, Rico Fajardo. Um, and I think knowing him and establishing that connection and relationship with him has just like, it's just been the most incredible thing because he is just an, I mean, I, any, any time I come on anything or whatever, Rico has to be brought up because he's the best, but I could just go on and on <laughs> about how he is truly one of my favorite people in the universe. And he is just unbelievable at opening doors for people, no matter who they are. Um, mm -hmm. so I think, you know, being lucky enough to have him believe in me has really, really, really been a very good thing to have in my corner. Um, so it was, I think in May of last year when Caitlin, who is the director of Tomo, um, she cast me as a, as a small part in a show she was doing called Talk to Opie Destiny. And that was the first like mm -hmm. actual named character that I was cast as. Um, and then literally like two months later, she was like, Hey, I have this project that they've asked me to cast the lead character for. Cause we're airing the trailer this weekend. Do you want to do it? I was like, what, what are you talking about? Like I've done this like <laughs> little part for you. And then like some, some other like background bit stuff for you. And you're like, Hey, here's mm -hmm. this like lead character of a very like well-known a property that like I was like this is ridiculous but I was very chill about it and I was like yeah I think I can do that yeah that, that'd be fun yeah for sure when I'm like <laughs> pooping my pants on the inside like crying screaming like what is going on Caitlin Glass is asking me to, I didn't even have to audition for this like Caitlin Glass is asking like this is one person that I would go to conventions to see like I've been to her panels like what is happening it's it's crazy it's crazy the front door so she yeah. just based it off of your regular voice and how you work and she's like i want you i want you to be this character oh my goodness yeah it's ridiculous like it's and it's so wild right to like be doing stuff like, like interviews like this and people are like what was the audition process like what is i was like i i didn't like i'm so 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 lucky to say that i didn't have to like she just she needed a quick turnaround and i just so happened to be there and she thought of me for that and it's thankfully gone really really well since that i'd like to think so it's it's very i'm it's so lucky it's so right place right time like i cannot i cannot emphasize enough how lucky i feel truly jeez louise it's like caitlin has like a deck of cards and she's like <laughs> truly she was you i know i know and that's like how blessed too because she is excellent at casting like all the shows that she has she you know it's it's just like for that to, to for me to be a part of that is like mind blowing. It's just mind blowing. I feel I I'm so lucky. So how did Caitlin direct you as Tomo? Like, did she ask you just be yourself, or did she direct you? I want you to sound like this. I want you to say these words in a certain way. I want you to express this when you're talking to Junichiro. Like, how was it? Yeah. Um. Thankfully, uh, Caitlin 
like I said, it's when she is casting, she's, she, I think she usually goes much more, for, at least with uh, like in the genre of rom-com, she'll cast you based on just how you sound normally. They don't mm -hmm. usually like, typically there's not a lot of like vocal um, manipulation that we typically have to do um, right, right. because they're just real people. There's no like magical girl. There's no, you know, whatever. Um <laughs> Just for certain scenes, like, you know, when Tomo gets super tough and, you know, she gets all Yakuza mode, there's like a voice that, you you know, we kind of had to work on a little bit and talk about. Um, but totally normally it's just, how, yeah, it's just how we sound. Um, and it, her direction style is very natural. It is very, like, she won't give a lot of preemptive things unless it's something that we need to talk about. Like for the more serious scenes, for example, we sort of talked about it ahead of time. We're like, this is very important. We want to make sure that it's given the time that it needs. It's given the grace mm -hmm. that it deserves. This is an important moment. We can't just throw it away. Like she is really going through something, whatever. Um, but because a lot of actors that she works with are based in theater, she mm -hmm. knows that a lot of times like reactions and initial reads of something are going to be the most natural. So she'll usually end up going like, there's not a lot of like, can we take it back and do it more like this? Like, so obviously sometimes there are times where that is necessary, but most of the time it's whatever the most honest thing is, is what's going to happen in the moment, which is so cool. It's so cool. So what was it like being Tomo, Try being her and the emotions going through with Junichi. Can you tell us about that? Oh yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> I'm lucky enough to say it's very easy because again, <laughs> Caitlin is very good at casting. So I didn't have to perform a lot. Like it's just, it, she is very similar to me. Um, and the way that she reacts to things is very similar to me. Granted, I don't go mm -hmm. around like beating up my best friend. Cause that's, that's not particularly <laughs> me, but I do have a lot of outbursts and I do speak very quickly and I do yell a lot. So that's the thing that, you know, it's, it's people are kind enough to ask like, Oh, is the, is the yelling difficult? Like how is screaming so much? I'm like, it's just no. Cause that's what I do. <laughs> that's just how I communicate. Um, <laughs> So that's really, it was just fun because I just got to really be myself and I could just be me reading these words that just so happened to be also what the character is doing on screen. Um, so it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And then, you know, with her relationship with June, it's, it's funny because it's so much screaming and I do so much screaming, especially <laughs> when I'm nervous and she's nervous all the time around him. So it's just, it's perfect. And it's, and again, with Rico, Rico, um, is the one who plays June, which is ridiculous, right? Because that's my friend. <laughs> and then Caitlin was like, hey, what if I cast your friend opposite you in this product? Like, what are you talking about? Um, so getting to play opposite him is a blast because we do have very similar energy. And um, it's just, it, it is just like when he would record before me, it was just mm -hmm. like talking to my friend or even when I recorded before him and there was just silence where his lines would be, I could hear how he would say, like reading it on the script next to the screen. I could hear how he would say it. Cause I, that's my friend. So I know, you know, I know how he would say it. Um, so it's just, it's just awesome. And so fun. So much fun. Cause I was curious, like when you guys were recording, if you were doing like, like um, <clears throat> round robin or round table recording or just individual, because like the dynamic in the delivery between like you and and uh the voice of Janitra was just like it it was so natural mm -hmm. i'm like they have to be in the room together recording like mm -hmm. it just came off so perfectly but, oh that's so uh, nice <laughs> yeah i wish we i think <laughs> it probably would have gotten out of hand if we were actually in the same room because we would have just like <laughs> continued to amp up and then by the end we'd just be like ah! like the whole time <laughs> Um, but no, because of how, uh, because the animation is already done by the time we go into record. So mm -hmm. a lot of it isn't even like adjusting acting. A lot of it is adjusting timing to fit the mouths moving. So trying right. to do that with multiple people is like almost impossible because it's even difficult to do with one person. So we have to go in individually and make sure that what we're saying fits what the mouths are doing on the screen. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what about those scenes with Carol? Uh -huh. that, you know, those um, brightly hilarious. set digs. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was it like trying to respond to those lines? <laughs> oh. Because, you know, Carol delivers it like so innocently, but you're supposed to be insults. <laughs> right, uh, right. It's, it's hilarious, right? Because um, so Sally came in after we had recorded a lot of it. So for about half of what we had, 
I recorded before her and then oh. about the second half I was able to play like I she was already in and I had to go after her and it, like I I mean me I just think it's hilarious so <laughs> I would uh, oftentimes when we were you know previewing it I would laugh at it and then sometimes I would even like when I hear it in my ears before I'm supposed to react to it it's so funny so sometimes I would have to be like hang on that's hilarious so I gotta do it again um <laughs> but she's so funny it's and it's you know it's usually a funny situation, so it's easy to, you know, for me to be like, oh, if she reacted like this, I think that would be really funny. So building off and playing off the comedy is a blast. It's so fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Mikael, you really like Misuzu. Oh, oh yeah. I love uh, Misuzu's oh, yeah. snark was just perfect. Like, mm-hmm. just always, like, I felt like it was always, like, a uh, fourth wall breaking. Every time <laughs> <laughs> a line was delivered. Like sometimes she would say something and I would like have to pause it and rewind it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she said what I thought she said. <laughs> she <laughs> sure did. Yeah, she's ruthless. She's ruthless. Oh man. She's so good. Jade is fantastic. And then so we know that with Tomo when she's loud, energetic, it totally matches with you. What about those scenes where she's trying to be feminine? <laughs> How is that? And be kind of shy and bashful when she's interacting with Junichi. It's like, oh, does this look good? Like, <laughs> you can tell me if it's not. <laughs> right. And that's How are things. those? Yeah. That's because it's it's genuine, right? Like, you know, when she is amped up, that's how she is most of the time right and she'll have those outbursts when it just it just you know it can't come out but with those it's like she feels awkward she's like why am i getting nervous about this like why do i feel weird about what i'm wearing like who normally i don't care like i wear my shorts under my skirt because i don't want people to see my underwear i don't care i don't care what people think um so i think it's 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 a matter of like like i said like why am i feeling like this like i'm just wearing an outfit why do i care what he thinks and so it's it's almost like she's going through that and that's what's making her sort of stop and not have another outburst and be like, what do you think I, what do you, what do you, tell me what I look like right now? It's so, <laughs> it's like that it'll start and she's kind of shy about it. But then when he gives her a reaction or something and it's not quite what she expects, then she's like, well, what the heck? What do you mean? Like then, then it goes there. So it has to have that first like processing, processing. Ah, uh, now why I don't understand anymore. You got to tell me. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it's fun, right? It's it, it's all fun. I'm gonna keep saying that. It's, it's just just fun. <laughs> How has the um, like, because the the fan response to your performance as Tomo has been astronomical. How has it been like being able to like see and hear and interact with the fans? Like that's got to be super surreal. It truly, it is. It's so backwards, right? Because I'm like, I am them. I am. Oh, we're the same. Because I'm also watching the show and I'm being like. <laughs> crazy like forget me like everybody else like wow that's crazy um so for people like it i don't even think it's really like actually processed because i haven't like you know reading it online is just like it's just words and there's a picture like it doesn't totally Mm -hmm. process that that's a whole human person that actually truly feels like that and maybe was nervous to even type this out and send it to me you know because i'm i'm the same way like trying to tell somebody that i really appreciate the performance of like i freak out i'm like oh my god i need to tell you how much this means to me but on the receiving end of it, I'm like, no, they just, they liked it and they watched it and it's fine. Like, no, somebody, this might really mean a lot to somebody. Um, so it is just, it's so strange to think that I could be on the other end of things. Cause so often I am the person who is expressing something like that. Um, and I haven't had a chance yet. I had a kind of a small chance back in, um, the beginning of February, I was a panel host, a Q and a moderator for my hero con in, in Texas. Um, mm-hmm. And I had a couple people coming up to me and be like, are you, are you Tomo? Do you, are you? The-? I'm like, oh, no way, bro. Like this, what, what is going on? And I even had a couple people ask to take a photo and ask me to sign something for the first time. So I was like, this is just, oh my gosh. It's just, it's just bonkers. So yeah, I, I, I still, ha- it still hasn't even like gone through my thick skull that that's a thing. It's, it's incredible. Then that was just in the beginning. You weren't even the, the what is it called the mm, the the focus of the panel i was like trying to exactly right like i wasn't there as a guest i was not invited to be like a signing person i was there working like i was the one 
you know, asking the questions and hosting the panels for the actors. And then I, I hosted a panel for Jade who plays Misuzu. And she was like, mm -hmm. um, are you guys aware that your host right now is the voice of Tomo? And I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so it was very sweet that, you know, some of the people that I was, 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 you know, interviewing and hosting, they were like, oh, hello. Like, yeah, so it was, it was very cool. <laughs> And it's, it's the first time that I've been in that because I've done plenty of moderating and hosting. I love to do that. I love interviewing. I love I love it. I love hosting. Um, so this was the first time that I that after I had, you know, Tomo was public information that I had done a mm -hmm. job like this. So it was just it was so like cool to be able to do that and have people know. I don't know. It was, it was just cool. It was so cool. <laughs> You're totally embracing it. You're like, yes. <laughs> I, I hope. I'm also at the same time like, man, I don't know. I'm just here for the good time. That's all. <laughs> so so from when you um originally did the recording for the uh for the show to I guess when it was became public, like how long was the uh, this might be going into NDA territory because uh, so, I don't think so anymore. Yeah, because we it? so the okay. trailer came out in July, so I recorded that in early July, um, okay. and they had my name in the article on Crunchyroll, and that was just me okay. and Sally. Um, no one else had been cast yet; it was just me. But they had my name in the article. But Caitlin was like, "Don't post anything about it yet," because I'm sure they're going to want to make a big announcement when the show actually drops. Um, mm -hmm. But we started recording it in October of last year. Ooh. And that's not usually the case for any other shows because with simul dubbing, usually you have like two weeks maximum to get, like you get the episode, you go, it's, it's out. Um, but for us, because this was a different process for the show and the ownership was a little bit different than most of the shows we have, um, we were able to get a, a super head start on it. So it was, okay. it's definitely a very unique situation, but yeah, I, um, i have been sitting on me since July and then everybody else since October. So it was, it was, it was not too, too much time. Cause some people have to sit on this stuff for like years, like with video game yeah. things, sometimes it's like years and years. So it, it isn't mm -hmm. too much, but um, there was a little time where I had to be like, I want to talk about this so bad. Because <laughs> <laughs> cause I was wondering, cause like uh, two of our friends, um, Nick Apostolides, who does Leon and Resident Evil 2 remake and 4 remake, like, I like I I knew he was going to do four remake years ago, and when they finally dropped the trailer, I, I texted him. I was like, "Nick, is that you?" He's like, he just sent me an emoji like, "Oh no!" <laughs> He's like, "Maybe, so say, uh, yeah." It, it is crazy because he had to sit on that for at least two years. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. I, I can't even imagine that. Crazy. I actually um I talked to um Ray Chase. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Nate. Amazing. Um, yeah, you know, okay, you know. Um, yeah. he was at Anime Frontier in December, and in the hallway at Anime Frontier, there was a huge banner for Tomo. And this was like a month before it came out. So I took pictures in front of it, whatever. Um, and so when we went to talk to him, I was like, Yeah, that banner out there, like that's that's my character. He was like, Oh my god, that's amazing. But he was talking about how when he got cast in Final Fantasy, that he was taking pictures with all like the huge billboards and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was taking pictures with all the billboards, but he was like, I can't say anything for a very long time. But he was like, It's such a weird <laughs> feeling. Because like, it's not your face. So like nobody knows. There's no way that anybody will know. Mm-hmm. So where do you go from here? Like, what are your plans? Like, have you been auditioning for more uh, roles? Like, do you, what anime do you want to be in now that <laughs> you're, you've been the main character? Oh, gosh. It's still so, like, it's so entirely up to casting. And I am truly, I, I know this sounds cheesy and cliche, but I truly am so excited to just be in the building at all so i don't mm -hmm. whatever anybody wants to put me as i'm down to play that's so exciting obviously i have my favorite shows like my hero and spy family and stuff um mm -hmm. but like even still like i it's not it's not something i'm like oh, i have to do this like it's totally fine i i'm i'm happy just to watch them and if i'm have am lucky enough to be a part of it that's just like a cherry on top you know um but yeah i am um i am in the in the roster i'm on the radar um, so it yes. just, it all depends on what people would like for me to do. Um, but I am, I'm around. I actually am lucky enough to have a theater opportunity coming up. I am, Ooh. I'm playing Turk in Tarzan at a theater here in Dallas. 
<laughs> which Ooh. I'm really excited about. Um, and then um, working on Shonen Showtune stuff, trying to get that back up and mm-hmm, to conventions, mm-hmm. especially now that my name is being tossed around at conventions, which is also crazy. Um, and thankfully, Rico has been an unbelievable right hand man with that stuff because he he like I said, he's unbelievable at opening doors for people. So he's very good at plugging good ideas and things, or at least things that he thinks is a good idea, which I'm very lucky that he would think that my idea is a good idea. Um, mm-hmm. And just a lot of a lot of personal projects too that I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to cook up <laughs> on the music <laughs> side of things. Yeah. Uh, one thing I definitely will say is um, for the years I've been doing podcasting, what seven eight years now? Oh yeah, nice. I've been doing it's it's crazy. I look up, I'm like, it's been that long. Well done. <laughs> so, well done. So, but it's like in the the years that I've known and befriended so many voice actors, I have to say like they're amazing down to earth people. And really like when you know somebody and they know you and you got a good repertoire with them, doors open. Uh (laughs) I'm telling you, no, it's, it's knowing people, no matter what, what field you are in, knowing people is what's going to get you good things. I think in any aspect, not even just work. I think just be nice, man. Like make friends or you don't have to love (laughs) everybody, but like, I don't know. It's more fun that way, at least in my opinion. I like how you said you don't have to love everybody. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. is because it's impossible to like everybody, right? Like, you're going to find somebody you're like, okay, I don't want to hang out with you on a Saturday. But, like, you can still be nice. You don't have to, you know, you you don't have to be like, oh, my God, yes, when can we hang out? If you don't mean that, like, don't do that, obviously. For sure, but, like, for sure. Don't be like, hey, yo, man, F you. Like, see you later, loser. Like, don't be rude. mm <laughs> So when uh, was theater and musicals open again for you? Because uh-huh. you went to voice acting because they were closed. Right. Right. So when um, did they um, reopen? Uh, it was it was a very weird process, right? Because like unprecedented times, nobody wants to hear that phrase ever again. But like we, nobody really knew what was the right thing to do. So mm-hmm. my first foray back into live performance was once I moved to Dallas, I auditioned for a show here. Um, and it just so happened to be my favorite musical in the entire world. And it was so good. And it was so fun. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was very like, wear a mask when you are not performing, make sure you are vaccinated. They were very careful about everything. They were very upfront mm-hmm. about everything. They're mm-hmm. like, we want everybody to be safe. The minute somebody is exposed, we are calling off rehearsals. We need to take time, make sure everybody is testing negative and then we mm-hmm. can come back in whatever. Um, so that was, October of 2021. Yeah. So toward the end of 2021 was when that show was. So that's at least for me, that is when I got back into my usual. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it didn't conflict with the voice acting at all. Like everything just worked out with each other. Oh yeah. I hadn't, I mean, I I was still taking classes at that point, like thankfully, and thankfully, like at least where I'm at, I'm not there like all day, every day. Like I still have Mm -hmm. plenty of free time to be able to do multiple things. Um, you know, and as I, as I work there more, hopefully more opportunities will arise and I will have more hours. Um, but yeah, even, even with Tomo, like having hour, it was usually just once or twice a week, twice a week was a lot. Like it was usually just, we would get things done pretty quickly because, because Caitlin cast correctly and we would get things done quickly and it wasn't, you know, Mm -hmm. it didn't take a lot of time to get it right. Um, which is very cool. Um, but yeah, and usually, uh, recordings will happen during the day. There are nighttime um things sometimes but that's usually for Mm -hmm. particular shows and you have to let them know ahead of time and it's like a scheduling thing but yeah it's 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 it is not as time consuming as it may seem sometimes 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 it is sometimes it very much is but at least for me it it, it's not too bad did you have to go oh i'm hitting my microphone sorry (laughs) you're okay (laughs) Um, did you have to go into the studio and record, or did you also have the opportunity to record from home? Like, do, do you have a home recording booth set up or anything like that? I, do, I have a very baby little, just some foam in a corner. I'm, I've got nothing like this is literally my, my trusty AT 2020. Like that's it. I'm not, I am not <laughs> fancy at all. Um, so they just built a new studio here in Dallas and they are very adamant about having people come into studio as much as possible. So obviously for the people in LA, they can use their partner studios out in LA. Um, Mm -hmm. But if you live near Dallas, they want you to come into the studio, which is great for me because I don't have a good setup. Um, 
<laughs> but yes, I, I, oh, I did everything. Everything is in studio, which is also wonderful for me because I like being able to be in the same room with a director and engineer because it feels like hanging out and that, that makes me feel more comfortable. Yeah. I think Mikhail was asking this cause we, um, we heard stories from Dota that some of the voice actors had to record from home. Yes. And a lot of factors were affecting the recording, like their computer, where they were. Some of them had to go into a closet. Right, and right. That was during, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was during like pandemic, pandemic times, which was before mm -hmm. I got into anything. So I that was like, granted, I was watching all of it happening online. I was like, ooh, I'm getting all the details. I'm watching all the videos. I'm seeing how they did this at home. Um, thankfully I did not have to do any of that. Um, the, like right as I started getting into it is when they opened up the new studio. So it was like, again, right time, right place. Wow. So you were preparing yourself in case you had to do that. You're researching. Yeah, right. I like had my little, right. I bought my little <laughs> microphone and I had my little stupid foam, but I had, I don't have any of the big, like, you know, people have the whole studio bricks, whatever. I don't have any of that. <laughs> I'm like imagining you going on Amazon and picking the items you're going to need to order in the future and saving it for later. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So thank goodness I did because now I don't need it. <laughs> so if, um, I, I guess uh, th this is more of a question of like, if someone wants to get into voice acting or if they're uh, deciding to take classes, is it imperative for them to either move to LA or move to Dallas for the VO industry because the reason I'm asking personally is uh, I'm getting training from John Eric Bentley and Daryl Rivers and they said I might need to move there if I want to like get more roles but there is remote work but I'm wondering like from your experience and you know being in industry what 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 is your opinion yeah, um, I think it depends mostly on the kind of work you would like to do. If you would like to do crunchy roll anime, you have to be in Dallas. Um, I, or I would say that's that would be the quickest way into the community because there are a ton of people who live in LA that are in a lot of crunchy roll anime, but they've already made mm -hmm. themselves known after either living here or, you know, making a name for themselves in LA doing the um, like Bang Zoom, the other like mm -hmm. the not crunchy roll anime. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, if you want to do like specifically anime or video game work, those are just the hubs. And again, that's how you're going to know people faster because it's a lot easier to meet people when you are actually in a room of people instead of just throwing your name out online, which is so tough because VO Twitter is a nightmare. Like I can't even keep up. However, that being said, if you are just interested in voiceover in general, there are an unbelievable amount of opportunities just online that you can record from anywhere. So it, okay. it to I think it totally depends on the kind of work that you feel most passionate about and connected to. Mm -hmm. okay. Kind of like how Lexi, she was interested in it and then she researched and then she did the classes. And when did you move before you took your lessons or after you took your lessons? It was after I, we moved in March, 2021, but the idea to move to Dallas came up before I even took any classes because I knew that the studio was in Dallas. Like I knew that that's where it was back from 2010 when I listened to all these panels when they would talk about the studio in Dallas. Um, so I, I talked to my roommate and I was like, what if we just like messed around and moved, moved to where the studio is just to try, just for a year, just to see what we could do, see if we could meet anyone, see whatever, because we are, we are the same. We both knew all the voice actors and knew who voiced this and this show and this and did the whole puzzles and were that annoying friend. But anytime you watch a new anime, you're like, oh, that's this person. Oh, that's this person. Oh my gosh, that's this person. And like everyone else was like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, so, so that's like, I, it was the first time that I ever found another person who knew, like, who, who had that much in common with me and like with, with, with where we were in our lives. It just, it was like, it was perfect. Um, and now she is also doing work there. She actually is one of two talent coordinators, but she has also started to do some, um, some roles here and there. And it's just, it's awesome. It's so cool that we were just like, <laughs> what if we did this? And then we did it. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> So, Mikael, when you're ready, we'll move to Dallas. <laughs> hey, come party okay. it up. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, when do you have time to do your other hobbies? You call them hobbies, illustrating and graphics designing. But, like, first, how did you get into it? And when do you have time to do it? Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I've been, I thought I was going to be a visual artist, like for most of, like most of my childhood. I was, because when I started singing and doing performing, people would make fun of me for it, but people would ask me to draw them and they loved my artwork. So I was like, okay, clearly this is what I need to do. I don't want to do what people make fun of me for. I want to do what people are being nice to me about. And then I took one art class my freshman year of high school and I said, no, I can't. Because when other people tell me what to draw, I don't want to draw anymore. I want to draw what I want to draw when I want to draw it. I can't do this as a career. Whereas performing, I don't need, like, I can just, I can just go. Like, it's a way to, mm. I can just go and move my body and do the thing and that's it. But with art, you know, you have to sit down, you have to focus, you have to plan, you have to do whatever. Um, mm. And I don't have the, I don't have the attention span or the patience to be able to do that for work. Like, I love doing it. But it's when I'm able to do it about something that I'm fixating on or thinking about or really obsessed with at the time. That's it's it's a way to sort of express that, um, which was kind of a hard thing to realize after people had been like, hey, can I commission you to do this? And then I would sit there and sit there and sit there and be like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. And then I'm not able to give it right. I'm not able to give it the love that it deserves. Mm. Um, so that that part, it gets a little tricky because, you know, I'm sure like you've seen, I'll make a drawing of something and then I'll have very nice people being like, can you do this for me? And I'm like, I could but i really don't want to <laughs> you can <laughs> I, I, I feel terrible right it's it, it always does not feel very good um but yeah so I, that's the thing is i don't really take a lot of time to do it it's just it'll sort of strike when I'm feeling really strongly about something mm -hmm. and that is it's it's just a way of self-expression and a way to get that out of my brain and into into reality um typically is how it is. So it's, it's, it's thankfully, I don't feel myself finding time for it or like trying to, excuse me, I don't find myself making time for it. I find time for it. It just sort of happens because I'm thinking about it. And then I'm like, oh, well, now I made 25 drawings of this character that I'm, I can't stop thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then what about Shonen Showcase? How did that start? Yeah. Um, so it is, a, it is a combination of my my biggest loves, I think, um, because, like I said, so many of these actors have the same background that I do. They love theater. They love musicals. Um, and a lot of them don't really have time to do stage productions much anymore because they are full time at Crunchyroll, because they are working so much, because they travel to mm -hmm. conventions every weekend. And um, actually, it's Ray, um, Ray Chase, Robbie Damon and Max Middleman, the lava show is what inspired me to make something like this because they found themselves just coming into a routine, every convention, answering the same questions, doing the same thing, just sort mm -hmm. of coming into mm -hmm. a rigmarole. And they were like, we have all this training. We are performers. We are entertainers. Why not bring that to conventions? Um, so I wanted to create an opportunity for any of these actors that go to conventions who have this background in musicals, who have this background in theater to be able to flex that, that muscle and to be able to perform on the stage, especially if they haven't in a long time, um, just mm -hmm. to give them an, an avenue to be able to do that. Um, so I have a virtual interview series um, that talks to, I've only had three episodes so far because it's, you know, that's, that's sort of the stuff that's uh, hard to t find time for is trying to schedule mm -hmm. like, Hey, when do you have like half an hour to just sit down and answer some questions about theater and then send me a video of you performing instead of just showing up to the convention and being like, Hey, whatever you want to do tonight, it's, you, you can, we can just throw it together. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just, I wanted it to be a way for these actors to showcase talents that fans might not see every day. They might not even know that they can do this or that they, you know, whatever. Um, and I think it's important too, because a lot of, a lot of these folks that come to conventions are like, how do I get into voice acting? How do I do this? How do I that? And I think seeing these people perform stage stuff is like, I, I mean, to me, that'd be incredibly inspiring and motivating be like, Oh, this is a whole other Avenue of this art form that I didn't even know about or that I was familiar with. But now that I've seen my favorite person do it, it makes me want to focus more on this or makes me want to research this specific thing. So they might find something that they really love and they didn't even know. Um, so it's just, it's just a little thing that I think would be, would be fun if other people are into it. <laughs> I think that's amazing that you took the initiative and organized it. And it is not only for the performers, but also for the audience. Because mm -hmm. it seems like you're thinking that there's a maybe majority of audience are like you. Like they've seen it, they're thinking it, but maybe they haven't taken that step like you did. Like take the initiative to do the research and take the classes and such. And it's mm -hmm. like you're giving them that opening, that yeah. opportunity. 
Yeah, that's, that's that would amazing. be the biggest thing. Yeah, that'd be the biggest goal is to show people that you can do it and also remind the performers that, hey, you still got it. No worries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like sometimes uh, from the voice actors that Mikhail has interviewed, a lot of them have phenomenal background mm -hmm. and experiences. And uh, it seems like a lot of people don't know about it because yeah. they just know from the anime. That's it. Exactly. And <laughs> it's like no there's more to them appreciate it right. appreciate the time <laughs> okay, that's definitely one of the things like i like to to dive into especially when i have a guest on it's like yeah we can talk about the show you're on or the game you're on but i want to talk about you your yeah, experience like exactly you got, right because, i'm the same yeah. way i'm the same way when i whenever they are silly enough to hand me the microphone at conventions i'm like all right so i'm going to talk about what your favorite color is like <laughs> we can talk because i'll count on the audience to then for the second half of the panel be like what was it like voicing so-and-so character in so-and-so anime i'm like no 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 tell me about your relationship with your brother like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> It's so fun. Yeah, because yeah, those are what makes the person, and there's a person behind the voice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you, where, did you know that you always wanted to do acting, or was there influence around you? Yeah. Like family, um, teachers, oh, friends. Not family, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not to say they're unbelievably supportive and amazing. And I'm so lucky. My family is incredible, but there's not a lick of performers in my family. Like my, my dad is a pharmacist and my mom is an esthetician. She's a skin, uh, skin specialist. So like, there's not, I don't have the, you know, the grace of like, I grew up and my mom was singing all the time. And she like, I, my taste in music is like, because of my parents, obviously, cause it's what I, you know, um, but, and like, you know, we, we watched like Disney movies and whatever, but that was mostly through like at school, our yearly musicals is how I got into it. And then I was like, Oh, I love when people clap for me. So I'm going to do this more. Um, <laughs> um, so it really like, that's, that's, so, I've never really thought about it like that, I guess. Like, I don't know what it was. I, I just liked it. And I just had a lot of fun doing it. Like I took dance class when I was really little, but I would cry every day. So my mom was like, enough of that. No, we're not doing this. <laughs> um, which I'm like kind of upset about because I so wish that I would have stayed in dance class because now I'm a horrendous dancer. Um, and I really wish that I had that skill set, but it's okay. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's something that I, I, I got into at school, I guess, because they had that available at school and I did it and people were like oh you're not half bad at this and I was like are you sure and then the students were like please shut up and then I was like I can't anymore because I like to do it too much I'm sorry um <laughs> so I just it was doing school plays in in elementary and middle school that I was like oh I I think I really like this but it was again people made fun of me for it so I was like I'm not gonna do this like you know it's just it's just something I like and it's fine um but then, and this is so silly, I was a junior in high school and we were at one X competition. So you do like a short 40 minute play with like a, a bunch of other schools in your district. And you know, it's like a, they get awards at the end or whatever. Um, and there was a person at another school that was like the performing arts high school of our area. And I thought he was so cool and so funny. And I wanted to be his friend so bad. I thought he was so cool. Um, he came up to me after our show was like, oh my God, you were so funny. You were so good. And I was like, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. That's it. <laughs> Sealed. <laughs> truly. And like, it's so silly. Like that that's what stuck with me. It was like, that was the moment where I was like, oh my God. But I think that was the first time because it continues to happen today. That was the first time that somebody that I had watched with my eyes, that I had admired, that I had like respected the work of turned around and told me that I was good. And I was like, whoa. whoa. Oh no. Oh no. I think this is, I think I'm going to have to base my entire personality off of this. And so. <laughs> Truly, that's just like, that is what I want is to be able to like getting work, you know, the work is the work, but it's the knowing people and getting to work with certain people that is very exciting to me. Um, mm -hmm. So, and that, that's, and that's something that I've come to realize about myself over the past couple of years. It's, it's always more so been about the people than it is the content. Um, at least in the grand scheme of things, like, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll pop in to do like theater every now and then when I'm like, this is fun. I, Cause it's what I love to do with my time. And it's how I, mm -hmm. you know, it's a wonderful way of self-expression, but like overall big goals is working with people that I really admire the work of and getting, getting to know them through working with them. Nice. Yes. 
That's a really good thing to point out because a lot of people think it's just them doing the performance, but they don't really see the whole big picture. Mm -hmm. So I really like how you pointed that out. <laughs> I don't know. I just, it just, like, like I said, getting to, like, having this be my first lead in an anime is opposite Rico Fajardo, directed by Caitlin Glass. Like, those two already. It's like that. That's that's exactly what I want. It's exactly what I want to do with my life. Are you kidding? Like it's perfect. It's it's so lucky. It's so lucky. And now you're like, I need to meet more people. So I well, can right, more. right. And it's, it's literally it's a matter of like getting to know them and learning things from them. Like being friends with Rico has taught me so much, just because he's so good at what he does and he's done. He's has so much experience, and it's also reassuring too to find out that we are so similar. They're like, oh, cool. This thing about myself obviously works because you are so successful. Um, and it's it's reassuring too having this happen in this field that like with theater and music and other things that I'm interested in, it could very well happen there too. So it's, it's very cool and reassuring. And also how much crossover between those worlds are. Like Rico mm -hmm. has um, a connection with somebody that I really really respect and admire in theater like a direct connection which blew my mind and i was like it's another thing of like the universe or god or whatever shaking me by the shoulders being like you're doing the right thing <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts man it's nuts so now that you are in the industry like the spotlight is on you she's been in the industry put respect on her name no 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 it's, but it's, it's, it's though it's true i have not i this is my first time definitely being being in this sort of platform like on this sort of platform i should say like being in in front of this many people so it is it, it is it is definitely a fresh experience for sure it is we are really really going into new territory here and another reason why i said spotlight <laughs> okay, okay i will be quiet what is it like <laughs> on social media for you now do you feel like you need to be more active or are you just taking it like oh i'm just going to do the same thing i've always done i i just need to tweak it a little <laughs> yeah it is it is weird i definitely feel like it has it has consumed more of my brain at just an everyday level uh, mm -hmm. which i don't think is good i think that has made me sort of be like uh, what is going on um it's 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 a very weird thing, right? Because I I feel very it's very important to me that I present myself first and foremost as a person. I'm just mm -hmm. like I want people to be I want people to know me for me. Like that's very cool that you appreciate my work. That's sick, and that's probably going to be what you know me most for. Um, mm -hmm. But coming across just as a person and still being able to talk about the things that I like and present myself just as me is very important. But I know with Twitter for, I don't, I have a weird thing with Twitter, like, because it's like your feed of tweets is, I feel more hesitant to just like say random crap, but like with Instagram mm -hmm. stories, when it's gone within a day, I'm like, I don't care. I'm, I'm, this is what I'm thinking about today. And it's going to be gone tomorrow. <laughs> um, so with Twitter, I feel like for mine, it's more of a way to like promote the things that are happening or like, mm -hmm. you know, with like career stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I still want people to know that I'm just a, I'm, I'm just a little guy. I'm just a little, you know, I'm just, I'm just a person doing the thing. Um, <laughs> and I would hope that they would listen to things like this because that's, that's where I feel like you're going to know me best. Um, so I don't know. I'd say social media is weird. I guess that's my weird roundabout answer to that is that it, it I, I don't really know. It's just weird. No, but I guess I, on Instagram, I'm, it's I'm the with same. You. I'm with you with that because it, when it comes to social media, I've gotten to a point now where it's like, I'm on it for work or promoting things. And if I don't have to be on it, I'm not on it. Yeah. It's just like, I'm like, there's life we can live and enjoy. And I don't want to be on social media all day. Yeah. Especially after, with, you know, exactly. <laughs> Beautiful baby's not on social media. Then what are we even doing? Why waste our time <laughs> if baby's not there? That's my, that's, that's what I say. And then you also have a TikTok, right? So <laughs> Barely. That's the thing. That my TikTok has absolutely nothing to do with career stuff. That is it. My two TikToks. Whoa. My two TikToks that I have posted on my page are me being a fan of a musician. Like that's it. Um, Crunchyroll was kind enough to tag my TikTok on the little like dance video we did or whatever. But I was like, they're gonna go to my page and be like, who's Cody Fry? Like, what is what is this? <laughs> I was like, well, this is me. So if you want to know really what I'm thinking about all the time, that there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I would like to put, because that's the thing is I consume a, an ungodly amount of TikTok. I am on there. So I had to put a time limit on my phone of how much I'm on TikTok. It's terrible. But I would, <laughs> I do love funny little videos and like video creation and that. I feel like that sort of comes in hand with my graphic design stuff. Like I love, I love content creation, but it's also <laughs> exhausting and scary when you realize that people are actually looking at it. And then I'm like, oh no, people are going to have thoughts about this. Oh geez. I don't want to have to think. I just want to make it to make it. So that's just something that I have to get over and do because I, I enjoy it. And I think it's fun. I think that applies to a lot of us, like any type of form of content creating, yeah. making a video, recording your voice, making pictures, anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I know I am guilty of overthinking it and like. Yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. Dang, here comes that bus <laughs> throwing you right under Hong Kong. Okay, I am holding myself accountable. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm put on blast. <laughs> Caught in 4K. Unbelievable. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. And then Mikhail over here reminds me, just do it. Just do and it. then then deal with it afterwards. Michael. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, it's something that we can all remind ourselves. And I think we'll be better for it. <laughs> so where can everybody find you on the internet and such. yes social media as we were just dis discussing well truly if you want to see me at my at my unfiltered best instagram is the place to go because i be on that instagram story almost every day it's terrible <laughs> um but that's i just post all my my fandom stuff i keep pointing the wrong thing this like literally i'm wearing merchandise of another one of my favorite like my number one right here um so if you want uh, Corey Wong and Cody Fry content, which is just me reposting what they have to say and me commenting on it, that's 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 what it is. Um, but Instagram is just my name, Lexi Nieto, L-E-X-I-N-I-E-T-O. And then Twitter is the same thing, just with an underscore between my first and last name. So L-E-X-I underscore N-I-E-T-O, because just my name was taken by a girl who has not used Twitter since like 2014 or something. It's very silly. <laughs> Um, and then if you want to find me on TikTok, it's just, it's just my name, but you, you'll find two Cody Fry fandom TikToks, <laughs> but it's like me <laughs> making things. So it's like, it's not just like a fan cam or something that's silly, but like, it is like me designing an outfit for a concert and then me making stickers for the same concert. Uh, I, I, I want to post more, but that's all I have on there right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally fine you know it's a yeah. starting point and you have yeah. more time to make more stuff and post it <laughs> yeah exactly and then my website has everything so literally just my name lexinieto.com as shown in show tunes has theater stuff has about me page i don't know whatever you want to whatever you want to see that's probably the best <laughs> full full all-encompassing representation is probably my website okay. nice nice and Mikhail, where can everybody find this episode of paul okay well, I, we're done. Oh, you don't want? Oh, I had one more thing I wanted to ask. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. No, 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 okay. no, no rush. We're chilling. We're chilling. Okay. So, um, what I wanted to ask, I'm not sure if you're familiar with, um, it's a manga that's it's kind of similar to Tomochan as a girl. It's called Hitomi Chan is shy with strangers. And I was telling her, and I think we talked about it in the, one of the Paul episodes. I was saying that you, Lexi, would be perfect. For the main character. Oh, yeah. shucks. Because, well, tell whoever's like, directing that show if it gets a dub. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's so funny. I think they just wrapped up the manga and um it's it's so hilarious. Like if I would say to anyone who's who watches or listens to this episode, like if you love uh Tomo Chan's a girl, you're gonna love that. If it ever gets an adaptation, mm -hmm. you're the first person I think should oh, be shucks. The main character. That's so sweet. Wow. Thank you awesome. for saying that. I'll have Tell to look at what it. What is it about? What is it about? Well, it's in the title. Well, it, I, can it be spoiling? No, it's not. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Quick, you know, I can uh, look up the Wikipedia. What's the Wikipedia? What's it called? <laughs> Say it again. What is it called? Hitomi Chan is shy with strangers. So basically, it's about um, uh, another girl that's similar to Tomo, tomboyish, athletic, martial arts, everything like that. And she meets um, the main character. Well, the other main character, his name is Usa, and he's a short little guy, and he's I think a year older than her. Yeah. And so basically, it's it's a rom. It's, it's kind of a rom com because ultimately they do end up together as a couple. 
but she's got really bad RBF. And the <laughs> thing is, every, everyone thinks she's like angry because she's got this yes. little mean face. Oh, the Wikipedia because- description says, Hitomi is a first year high school student who has a scary appearance, but is actually shy and wants to be more social. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when, when when you find out why she makes the face, it's because she doesn't have her contacts in. She has re- really bad Oh, my eyesight. God, how funny. <laughs> that's so funny. This is cute. Oh, my God, that's fun. That's so fun. It's, it's so wholesome. And too. then she awkwardly approaches things, and it looks like she's being aggressive, but she's yeah. just really awkward. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. I literally, that's that's how I identify with Tomo, is like, well, she's so frequently like, oh, my God, she's scary. But I'm like, no, she's excited. She just kind of comes off as aggressive sometimes, all the time. All the time. Because I'm, like, I'm excited about something, but I'm like, oh, I love this so much! And they're like, whoa, she's going to kill someone. I'm like, I promise I won't. I'm just really, I'm just, I'm very happy. I promise. <laughs> Well, you should definitely come out here to Hawaii, come to some of the conventions here. Oh, dude, uh, just, that'd be incredible. We just had what? Kawaii Con? Kawaii yeah, Con. Yeah, Kawaii Kayla Con was there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So definitely, you should definitely come out. And um, if we can put you in touch with people there, then yeah. We can yeah, that's the way that. to do it is to to put put whoever you want to see there. You got to you gotta poke those people doing those conventions because that's how <laughs> that's how it all happens. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's so cool though that's again that's like so that's so weird i'm just like i'd be there to I'm, if they'll hire me to host but the people are like no they'll pay you to be there just to like hang out and be a guest i'm like that's that's crazy no they won't <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> it's nuts man that'd be sick yeah well thank you for being on podcast across worlds we really appreciate it like thank oh you gosh. so much for taking your time and uh, telling us your story your journey <laughs> it was amazing dude thank you for having me this is so fun please this is so cool yeah, definitely we'd love to have you back on again and yeah if you're ever out here in hawaii let us know dude um, i w- that's so that's so cool <laughs> We're like the go-to for all our VO friends. Like they're like, "Hey, I'm in Hawaii." I'm like, "Which which island?" Are yeah, you right. On? I was yeah, like, "That's you got to be a little more specific, right?" Like, oh, oh, we're gonna be in Waikiki. Oh yeah, we're right down the street. Okay. There you go. Nice, sick, <laughs> sick. So yeah, just let us know if you ever come out here, and um, definitely, um, we love to stay in touch. Love to do this again, and yeah. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Of course, of course, Ooh. of course. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Truly. Yeah, so everybody who's listening, watching, whatever platform you're on, make sure you follow Alexi Nieto. Follow Paul. (laughs) Follow podcasts around the world, baby. Come on. (laughs) And now, Mikael, where can people find Paul? Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. Plug it. Plug it. Plug master. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So if um, if you're looking for the video format, this is available on Spotify as well as on YouTube. You can catch brand new episodes every single week on both those platforms. And if you're looking for audio versions of the podcast, it is available on every major podcasting outlet that is available from Amazon. I'm still trying to keep it straight. Sorry, sorry, sorry. (laughs) No, I love it. I love your energy. (laughs) Break you were doing great. Team. You were doing great. I had no idea. <laughs> Improv. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it's available on every major podcasting outlet available. So Amazon po- uh, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, Apple. Did I say Apple Podcasts? That too. Uh, <laughs> where else? There's other places. Yeah, everywhere. It's everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> Just <laughs> Google it. You'll find it's- something. You'll find it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can also find us on every social media across platforms for me at Lehua Superfina. Oh, yeah, that's my part. Yeah, uh, you can find me uh, <laughs> at Mikhail Casanova across the board. Uh, am I active on every platform? Probably not. If you message me, I see, I see you. I'll get back to you when I can. <laughs> I, I got to check with my director over there. And, yes, and her assistants, the cats, three yes. cats. Yeah, but I get back to you. I see you. <laughs> so, everyone, thank you for listening and watching podcasts across worlds. Keep reading manga, keep watching anime, and keep listening to podcasts across worlds. We'll see you on the next one. Woo! Later. <laughs>
Thank you for listening to Podcasts Across Worlds. This is a passion project that was created by Lehua Superfina and is co-hosted by myself, Mikhail Casanova. If you enjoyed this episode and any of the topics that we talk about or any of the guests and voice actors and various people we have on our show, then make sure you do us a solid by, if you're watching it on YouTube, which is on youtube.com slash Lehua Superfina, then make sure you like the video, share it around with someone you think would enjoy it, as well as leave a comment on what you think could be improved or what you liked, what you didn't like, and all that in between. If you're listening to the show on any of the major podcasting outlets, such as Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or any of the others, then make sure you leave a rating, leave a comment, interact with the polls that we put out, and so much more. If you want to support the show, we do have Patreon, as well as many other methods for supporting. And with that being said, we're signing out. We hope you enjoyed this, and we look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Keep listening, keep watching, and keep enjoying podcasts across worlds. We'll see you around.